Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Thanks so much for coming by. Uh, this is Chris Petrie. I want to welcome you to my channel. Um, this is an Extreme Beginners series video. And uh, here on this uh, video series, Extreme Beginners, we're trying to build our skills with drawing and sketching. So this is what we're going to do. On this video, we're going to kind of work on building some... Uh, skills with our drawing and again the simple technique is basically just two things a simple office pencil for a light sketch first to get everything in place that you want to have if you're working from a photograph or uh, online, you're using maybe your your uh, electronic device, your phone, your iPad, your computer, laptop, your home computer, your desktop computer. You might have a magazine. You might have some old photographs. You might be looking out your window, or you might be in a park doing some sketching, or in your car, parked with the doors locked, and you're looking out and you're doing some sketching. Whatever it is, the thing is, you want to first get your light sketch done, where you kind of outline things where you want everything. Fill your rectangle up with a lot of information. Zoom into the scene. Get lots of information in there. We'll talk about how not to do the always dreaded situation where someone will take a picture of you on vacation and you can barely see yourself. You look like a little tiny speck in the middle. <laughs> we'll talk about that on this video. But I'm not, I don't want to get off on a side, uh, uh, you know, down a rabbit trail here. Let's just, we're going to cover a lot of stuff in this video, but it's really an extreme beginner's video. We're going to learn how to sketch and draw this. You're going to do it. You're going to have a fun time, and you're going to really learn a lot from this video because we're going to cover how to lightly sketch this first to get all your things in position that look good. Then we're going to go over the top of that with some china marker. We're going to show you how to use your china marker, a little bit of sandpaper to sharpen up your china marker. Um, so that you can get a little more sharper lines when you want to do things like rigging on boats and some finer details like windows and doors and buildings and things like that. So we're going to cover it all, the whole enchilada here, the whole kit and caboodle, and uh, you're going to have a fun time and enjoy it. And that's the main thing. Have fun with your watercolors and your drawings and your painting. If you have fun, you'll always want to come back and do more. And, and that's the main uh, thing I always say is have fun with your, your artwork because it'll keep you uh, going at it. And um, so we'll be back in just a second, and we'll start with our sketch. And we'll start with some really basic preliminary ideas of how we're going to get this done. And when we're done, you'll have this all completed. You'll be happy. You'll have a gorgeous drawing for yourself. You can put it in a frame and uh, save it, put it on the wall if it comes out good. If not, you're going to do another one or two or three or four until you get one that looks just right. And then you're going to put it in a frame. Put it on your wall in your house, in your studio, in your basement wherever you would like to or you can give it as a gift too. give it to somebody as a gift for a birthday or holiday or whatever okay all right we'll be back in just a second all right we just saw the finished drawing and we used a china marker for this drawing so i'm hoping as a extreme beginner you're going to grab yourself some peel off china markers like i have here it's very uh, distinguishable because it has a uh, little small um, piece of string on this. And then as we work, you'll see I'm going to peel the string off. And you peel, peel the paper off the china marker as you go so you have more crayon to work with. But these are great to work with to do sketching. I've been using these for many, many years. My mom actually used to have these around the house and she used these a lot when she was younger studying in New York City when she was an artist when she was very very young in her 20s so I just was uh, gifted these from her when I was younger and I just kind of always had them around here and there probably didn't use them all that much for many years but I still was familiar with them and kind of was you know did, did use them once in a while uh, so we're gonna use the china marker here for the uh, entire drawing First thing I'll do is I'll just do a quick uh, pencil border around this drawing. So I'm going to start up here. And I'm just going to go around like this. Just so we have a border. And I'm going to come up here like this and just kind of make sure I'm 
in the camera view, which I am. There we go. And then up here, like so. Okay. So that's our picture frame or our rectangle that we're going to work within. That's always and kind of important to always in your mind think of it as when you're doing a painting or a drawing. You have a rectangle to work within and then whatever you're going to do, whatever picture you're going to draw, whether it's from photographs, magazines, whether you're going to draw something from like outdoors when you're looking out the window or when you're out in the park, whatever it is, you're just remembering that you want to kind of have it like in the in your mind you want to think of it as like a picture frame if you're taking a photograph so when you're taking a photograph you're going to look at your uh, through your viewfinder on your phone you're going to see the picture see what you want to take a picture of and then sometimes you'll zoom in a little bit to make it look a little better you zoom in and crowd the the picture frame with more information like you know usually i always mention it this way let me see if I, oh, i'll find a scrap piece of paper Here's a scrap piece of paper just to make the point. When you're taking a photograph many times, you'll notice that it usually someone that's um, very, very brand new at photography will not understand the the powerful um, dynamics of filling your your picture frame with information. So someone that's brand new that's really hasn't done a lot of picture taking and they have a camera and, they, and someone says oh take our picture and you're maybe on vacation and some you know a couple really someone nice or a couple or whatever says hey can you take our picture and you say oh yeah sure and you grab the camera now if you're good at <laughs> taking photographs if you're if you're an artist you've already kind of you know if you're following my channel I've done this many times I've explained this but I'm going to explain it again because I always repeat myself of course but you know, if you're going to take a picture of, let's say, let's say one person says, hey, can you take my picture over here by this building or whatever it is? And then you have some buildings over here and whatever. And and then you say, take my picture. And, you, and the person, you know, person says, please take my picture. And you take their picture. And it looks like this. And this is the picture of the person you just, you took. Like that. And they're standing there. That would be sort of like, it's really... The subject matter is very, very small. It doesn't look too exciting. You know, if you were to take this picture and fill the... Fill the picture space, the frame, with your... Someone's waving hello, whatever. I mean, I'm just doing this for fun here. But to just say that if you fill your picture frame with information like this, that's much more pleasing and pleasant looking where you have someone, you fill your subject matter up into the frame of this versus doing something like this where you can barely see the person. They ask you to take their picture and then... You did something like this, and then when they get back from vacation, they say, "Oh, that per oh that person, they I can barely see who that is. That's me." But you know, whatever. So you kind of get the idea that you want to fill your rectangle when you're doing artwork. Not in every case, but a lot of times you're going to find that you'll have much more success if you're filling your picture space with a lot of subject matter. You're zooming into the scene almost like a photographer would think. You know, you want to zoom in on things and get the subject matter, the exciting subject matter, fill that space up that you have here and not maybe do something where you're just putting a tiny object in the middle of a large rectangle like this. That would be unpleasant, unpleasing, and some most people would all agree. We'd all agree, wow, yeah, that's not as good as this. So just to say that, fill your, fill your rectangle up with lots of subject matter. Um, so when you're looking at pictures online, photographs online, magazines, um, photographs you might have from vacations, whatever it is, or if you're outdoors and you're drawing, try to think of it as fill your, fill your picture space up, your rectangle, your picture frame with lots of subject matter and make it exciting and keep away and try to avoid something like this where your main subject matter might be a person it could be something else it could be a, uh, it could be a, a car maybe you're gonna draw a car 
Okay, so if this is a car you're going to draw, it's much preferable to draw a car in a picture frame like this. Fill the picture, right? We would fill that picture frame up with a car. I'm not great at drawing cars, obviously, but you would kind of see that. It looks like there's... We could do a little better than that. There we go. Okay, so you have a car here. Much better to fill a picture frame like this with the car, like so, versus doing something like this where you can't really see it too much. Well, you know, you can see it, but it's looks more exciting like this where you see the car and you see all the details of it and you would probably, you know, do all the details of the car and so forth. Just doing a quick sketch to kind of make that point really clear. Let's fill that picture space up with inter interesting information. Okay, so we're going to do a drawing now. What I'll do is I'll do a quick, again I'm using my peel off china marker, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll look at my picture that I'm working from. It's copyrighted so I can't put it on camera, but what you'll do is once I'm done with this drawing, you'll use that drawing that, I'm complete, that I've completed. You'll use that for your drawing, that's all. So I'm looking at it and I'm saying, all right, the it's a seascape with some boats. So about halfway across the picture, and I'll just do a little light sketch over here. This is going to be the distant shoreline over here. And then there's some middle distance here, which looks like a um, kind of like a small uh, cliff next to the ocean. Not a really a cliff, but it is sort of a cliff. It's about maybe only 10 or 15 feet, but it's a cliff in a sense. And then there's uh, there's a boat over here. So I'm going to lightly sketch what I'm seeing in my reference photograph to try to get in the main composition of what I'm doing here. So there's a boat here. And I'm doing it very, very lightly. So that it gives me a chance to maybe adjust it a little bit if I have to. I think I think I can erase China marker. I think China marker is a we can erase it a little bit. Not so much. So China marker you have to be pretty accurate. You can also use a pencil to do your first roughing in of your sketch. Maybe we'll do that. Let's do that. Let's use our pencil here. This is a 6B pencil. You can use any pencil. You can use a mechanical pencil. You can use an office pencil like this. Anything like this works fine. And then what we're doing is we're just essentially sketching lightly what our composition is. And then we'll go back in and go over it darker and do like a final drawing over the top of this. But first we want to kind of get everything where we feel comfortable with, that it looks good, and it sort of looks like what we're trying to accomplish with our drawing here. So there's another boat over here. So I'm using an office pencil here, and I'm just trying to, there's a boat over here. Like that. And then there's that cliff over here. And then there's a small something or other there. Then there's a, a sail from another boat over here. A large boat. It's got a very large mast. And there's some rigging on there. So we'll just kind of do a little quick light sketch of that. And then over here. So I would say this boat's here. We have another boat over here that's like this. Like that. And then over here, there's another boat. This one is sort of maybe sort of uh, 
It's, it might be in motion, moving across the water toward the dock over here. And then the cabin of the boat is over here. And there's a, uh, there's a top. We can see the top of the boat here, so I'm going to leave that white paper up here. Feel free to do some sketch lines to sketch things in, because we're going to go over this again anyway, so don't worry about it. And then there's some other stuff here. There's some ropes and some rigging and some lobster pots or some things like that in this boat. And there's a window over here in the top area where there's some light coming through and then there's some other So we're seeing the interior of this cabin area a little bit. Okay, so we have that boat there done. And there's some, we'll just do some shading with our office pencil again, just kind of trying to get ourselves prepping for our final drawing we're going to do with our China marker which is going to give us the really beautiful darks and we can shade lights and darks with this. So your China marker, you're going to get all your darks and lights into this drawing. So we're getting there, but first let's use a light pencil line to get some stuff drawn in here and then we can always uh, erase a little bit if we have to. As you're drawing, you can erase a little bit here and there. I wouldn't recommend doing too much erasing, but try to get the feel for your drawing and the shapes and once in a while if you have to do a little erasing that's that's totally fine but I wouldn't make it an erasing uh, marathon because <laughs> that would not be good that'll not make for a good drawing if you're doing we're erasing most of the time so just get it in it can look a little funny a little awkward no worries especially if you're just beginning if you're an extreme beginner you're not gonna have you know great drawing skills drawing skills take years and years to perfect don't let anyone else kid you and say, oh, this person has talent and that's why they can draw. No, I'm telling you from experience myself and from knowledge that I have being in art many, many, many years, drawing skills come from practice. And that's how you get great at drawing is by just practicing over and over. Don't make a big deal of it. Just get it done 15 minutes a day. And that's all you need. And you just keep doing 15 minutes a day. And then eventually you'll say, oh, I can do a half an hour a day. And you'll be doing a half an hour a day, and then maybe eventually, oh, I do an hour a day. And then after that, you realize, wow, I've kind of, I'm doing great drawings now because I'm doing all this practicing. And that's what it is. It's just putting in the time, whatever you can do. If you're very, very busy, you might only be able to do 15 minutes, and that's fine. You'll get, you'll get a lot of results from just doing 15 minutes a day, definitely. That's for sure. Crank it up to half an hour a day, and you, you definitely will see even more results. If you practice only 15 minutes every once a week, you're not going to get a lot of progress. That's just the simple basic facts of it. One must practice to get better. All right, so now we have this over here. This is the, uh, the embankment along this waterway here. So now we have this boat here there's a darker spot over here. This is another boat over there. That one looks a little bit close there. I think this one actually should be up a little higher and this is why I like to say do our pencil drawings. So this one, this is here like this. That's another boat here. Okay. Okay, that's the distant shoreline down over here. And it goes over here. So I'm just going to try to make sure I keep my 
actual water level. Here's my water, my water level. Let's keep our water level straight. If you need to, once in a while, bust out a ruler and say, you know what? I'm going to make sure I get my water level straight. So let's keep our water level straight. Okay, like that, and like this. And that'll go a long way too. If you can get your water level uh, level all the way across your, your painting, that's really going to go a long way. It's really going to look good. If you have water over here and then all of a sudden it's down over here on this side, it'll look really awkward. So if you can get your water level level, kind of keep that in mind. You want to just keep that water level where the horizon line is, or the water level line here. It's going to look much better. Okay, so now we have our basic, our drawing. Lightly sketched out. And then we have some shadowing and things. We're going to do that with, again, our China marker. So let's get started in just a second. Let me um, take a break. So when I take a break, I this means I'm actually going to relax for just five, ten minutes, and then when I come back, I'll be energized again, I'll have more concentration, I'll be more relaxed, and I'll be able to do a better job at drawing, actually, if I take a break. If I don't take a break, I might not I'll be able to get all the lines and the shading and everything that I want to do uh, here done with as much, um, you know, quality as I want to. So I want to do a quality drawing here, and I don't want to rush it. So that's why I'm taking a break, and I'll come right back in like five, ten minutes, and we'll just start working our darks and lights and all of the interesting information we have here. And by the end of this, you'll have this to use to work from, and you can uh, pause the video and work from that, whatever you wish to do. So I will be back in just a few minutes. Thank you. All right, I'm taking a break and I'm feeling a little more energized. I'm feeling like I have more concentration now as I come back in. Let's get started now. Again, you're going to use this. You're, once I'm completed with this 100%, you'll use that for your reference. So now I'm just going to start working in my darks and lights, everything. I'll start out with my darks, actually. And I'm just going to do the boat over here, which has some really good, strong darks this so I'm really going to press down and you're probably going to see that I'm going to use I'm going to have to peel this thing and use a lot of this marker because I am going to use a lot of darks here so I'm just going to slowly work my way around here there's the boat and there's some darks here like this this is watercolor paper too so I'm getting a nice uh, grainy effect There's some shadow here, so let me put that in. Like this. And then there's some dark shadow over here by this boat. And this boat has some dark shadow up here like that. And over here like this. And there's some shadow on the boat over here. Now if you do this on printer paper, I was going to do this on printer paper and I decided I wanted to use some watercolor paper, but printer paper, it's a little smoother looking. You can kind of see how my shadow is a little smoother looking there. Some darks, some shadow lines like this. You can kind of see how that's a little smoother than this here, and I'm even on this, let me see if I can get a smooth surface here. If you're working on a smooth surface, you can see how smooth you can get that shadowing with this China marker, which is really great. So I really should be using a softer, more satiny, smooth finished paper, but I decided for some reason I was just going to use some watercolor paper, and this works too. It's just, it's a different look. But if you can imagine, you get a little more smoother lines. Better looking, uh, smoother, softer looking drawings. So this might be good with some drawing paper, sketching paper. 
this is just printer paper. Office printer paper works great too. If you want to do your sketches on office printer paper, you'll always have a good um, result with that. So I'm going to continue with this here. And this will give us an interesting effect nonetheless. Okay, so we have some reflections here from this boat in the water. There's a little bit of uh, that wall over there. There's an embankment over here. Okay, and then over here we have this boat here. Let's work over here just a little more. There's a little bit of a This is the embankment over here. And there's some more of that over here. And there's more darks in here. So I'm going to try to just get the uh, main idea of the lights and darks in this. So I'm just using this to shade this in and then there's some some lines here and there. And then uh, over here we have this other boat here. So we're going to do this other boat right here. We get some darks there. You have a medium tone there, some darks over here. Then you have some good darks here. inside this cabin like that and then there's some and then there's some darks over here so this is a mast over here and a mast over here and there's a dark over here like that windows. A little bit of shadowing on the side of the boat here. Like that. A little bit of dark under there. There's some more darks over here. some more shadowing on, or reflections on the water there. This is some more shadowing here. Let's do a little bit of water, kind of those water movement of water. Like that, just a couple and then this is over here, like so. Lighter reflections over here. And there's some reflections of these. Like that. More water reflections like that. Okay, let's get this sail, this uh, mast here. A couple of rigging lines, nothing too fancy, just quickly put them in. Like so. And then we have someone up over here. There's some up top here. They're up on top of this embankment. And we have some more medium tones over here. 
and more medium tones over here this is the far distance distant hills and uh, maybe some buildings or whatever over here but it's very light you know it's kind of a lighter look and then you have some this looks like a, uh, a boat crane over here that's there and then this is more medium over here medium tones so I'm going to shadow this in over here so you can see I'm really just moving along I want you to use this um, I want you to use this as your guide. I'm going to do a couple distant, maybe, roof lines. Like that, just to kind of make it feel like there's some buildings back here. Like this. Like that. You can get creative and do a little bit of different, uh, you know, put a little twist on things yourself. You might put more boats up here or something, or it's up to you. But I think we really are getting things wrapped up here. We, we're just getting a sketch in here. That's all. A fun sketch. Take your time. Enjoy it do many of these as many as you can as often as you can so that you'll always be starting a new one if this one doesn't come out good that you're trying for the first time no problem you're going to be starting another one soon you might want to take just a small section of this one you can always crop things down and say you know what I'm just going to do this section right here so maybe you just do one boat or two boats a little figure up here on the uh, top of the embankment along the seawall here a distant uh, uh, boat you know a nice trawler or something with some mass fishing boat over here you can do something like that if you want to go with the whole you know if you want to go for the gusto and do the whole enchilada and do this whole thing do the whole thing you can always break it down into smaller parts that's always works but you can kind of see we went through it pretty well here. We got our medium tones here, darker tones here, like so, really super darks here. And if you kind of look at this, it looks really pleasing because there's little, um, little passages and spots of darks. And it's mostly all white paper, which looks really nice. And then you have a fair amount of middle tones these middle lighter kind of like not as dark right so you have your middle tones like this you have your middle tones on the boat here and you have some interesting reflections here and there like this like this here you do some reflections like that like so Have some anchors in the in the water there. Maybe you have a life preserver over here. Maybe a little more darks in here, like that. And this really looks good dark in here. This is the cabin. Darks, you can darken up your darks if you want. Like that. Really press hard on the the um, marker, the china marker here. To get your darkest darks. more and 
we had this bow over here, like so. A little bit of that waviness to the water with some couple of those here and there. And that's really fun. You can you can do this anytime. A quick sketch like this with a china marker really um, can uh, lead to a lot of uh, encouragement and fun towards doing more drawings. And we have this over here. This is the embankment over here. Like that. And we can do another figure down here. Maybe we'll do a couple more figures. We got another figure here. Maybe another figure over here on the boat. Eagles. And there we have it. So that's the Extreme Beginners sketching with a China marker. Very simple um, approach of doing a light pencil sketch first with your uh, office pencil or you know you can use a mechanical pencil or uh, any other uh, pencil you might have that handy that you might use. There's um, retractable, so I have a couple of retractable pencils, an office pencil, so you could use any one of these three, anything like this, just a regular lead pencil, to do a light sketch of this first, super light, so that you can make a little adjustments, maybe erase a little bit here and there if you have to as you go. And we did mention again, just recapping here, we wanted to make the line of the water, the level line of the water across the page all the same. And then we can even take advantage of the fact that we did that so that we can actually put it across here like this and kind of make it a little bit of an interesting line that carries through the whole drawing like that. And that looks good. And you can put a couple little rocks maybe in this seawall here and there and a couple lines. In any case, I think we have a really good drawing. And again, the final was the China marker, peel off China marker. If you run out of China marker when you're doing this here, you just pull down on that. And you peel around like this, and you keep peeling it, and eventually you'll have an extra bit of crayon to work with like that. So you peel off the china marker with the string, and uh, you keep working with it. So instead of sharpening it with a sharpener, you're just pulling the string back and peeling off. And what I have is usually... I've been in construction all of my life and I always have sandpaper around so I use my sandpaper and what I do is I just take my sandpaper that I have usually if I'm doing some carpentry work and I use sandpaper or I'm filing down some things or taking some rough edges off things whatever metal or wood you can use it too for this you can just take this and some very very fine this is very very fine sandpaper 240 grit and you just you get yourself a good point on that so you can really especially if you're working with smooth paper again I said that smooth paper will actually work better with this so if you can find some really good drawing paper smooth drawing paper nice satin finish really smooth this will work a little better with this type of a drawing 
I decided to use some watercolor paper I had in the studio here. But if you're going to attempt this type of a drawing, I would suggest using smooth paper and uh, save the watercolor paper for our watercolor sessions. But you can see how I got a really good point on this. And then you can do finer lines with this point, like this, the rigging, like that. Maybe over here you have a couple of rig rigging lines over here. Maybe we'll put a couple more of these here. Like that. And that's good. A couple of chimneys here. Maybe there's a chimney with some a little bit of smoke going like that there. So make it as exciting and as fun as you want to and do many of these all the time. Do different subject matter. I happen to really enjoy seascapes, boats, the shore, anything like that. I'm really jazzed about that. I'll always be interested in doing drawings like that and paintings. But I also like the city and seascapes and landscapes and all that too and figure painting. But whatever you like the most, you'd want to do your drawings. So especially if you're just beginning, the only other thing I would say is if you're just beginning drawing and you're trying to get your drawing skills better, try to stick with things that you really, really enjoy the most. So if you really, let's say, like seascapes and things like this and boats, try to do a lot of those and stick with those, but also do other things, branch out and do other things once in a while. But if you find the most exciting things are like something like seascapes and boats, do those the most because that's you're going to want to do those and you're going to want to work your 15, 20 minutes every day if you're drawing something you really, really enjoy. So, you know, if you don't like um, boats or shore scenes or anything like that, you'd probably want to stick with something you like more. Maybe you like city scenes. So you'd want to do more city type scenes, maybe buildings, bridges, uh, cars, things like that. City scenes with uh, lights and light posts and so street signs and buildings and windows and doors and buildings, all that kind of cool stuff. And we'll do more of those drawings too. So maybe the next time we come back and we do another Extreme Beginners uh, drawing like this, we'll do something different. We'll do a, maybe a cityscape or a uh, landscape. But I wanted to start out with this because I really do enjoy doing the boats and these seascape type scenes. And I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you're going to try this just for the fun of it. Always remember uh, with watercolor painting and if you know you're... Hey everybody, just a quick informational. I'm really excited. I've been uh, invited to the Thousand Island Arts Center to teach a uh, workshop this summer. It's uh, August 9th, 10th, and 11th, which is Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And it's a daytime workshop, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. We're going to have an absolutely fantastic time. I'm going to put up the itinerary in just a second, too, as well. But I wanted you to have the Thousand Island Arts Center phone number so you can call to register. Or you can also register online. That's up to you. Uh, their phone number is 315-686-4123. Again, their phone number is 315 686 4123, or you can also um, register and look up all the information online at tiartscenter.org. Again, their website is tiartscenter.org. Um, I'll put the itinerary up here so you can just... I'll scroll it. I'm not going to read it. I'll just kind of scroll it up so you can kind of see the class description. And you can look this up online too. I encourage everybody to look um, for the um, brochure. If you go to the website, you'll see a brochure button. You click on that brochure button, you'll see my course, as well as other courses if you can't happen to make these dates, but you still want to take a watercolor class or watercolor course and workshop. And uh, there's also an online course for watercolor artists. So if you're interested in doing online uh, watercolor courses, they have those as well. That's something you was really, this is a great resource, everyone, for your, for your watercolor art. I know some of you mentioned that you wanted to um, do, wanted to inquire about online art and watercolor painting classes. I, um, I'm not doing them right now. I'm really looking forward to maybe in the future doing some online courses, but right now I'm just not um, 
not geared up for that right now. So they have them, though, for those that want to do online courses. But just a great resource and beautiful historic area, beautiful scenery, water and boats everywhere, beautiful architecture, shopping. There's uh, museums. So that's the itinerary. And um, I hope you'll all make it out to the workshop. And again, we're going to have a great time, tons of fun drawing and painting and watercolor. So I hope to see you there. And um, let's get back to our watercolor painting. Interested in continuing to do watercolor painting, you're, you'll be really better off if you can work on your sketching and your drawing skills because it'll really help you even if you branch out to do oil painting or acrylics or other things in art like pastels, whatever. It'll always help you to do drawings because you'll get better at your drawing skills and when it comes time to looking at something, whatever it is, flowers, boats, buildings, uh, trees, anything, people, portraits, whatever it is, if you're always practicing your drawing skills, you'll get better at all of the other subject matter. Even if you're just interested in doing boats, if you continually draw boats all the time and then once in a while do other things, you'll automatically be better at the other subject matter because you're practicing boats so much. You're just used to doing curves and lines and things like this, straight lines and, you know, vertical lines, parallel lines horizontal lines, you'll be used to doing, you know, again, curves, and um, you'll get used to perspective, seeing things like this, like the tops of the boats with a little bit of light on there. See, we did this here. That's a little bit of light on top of this boat. So that's, you're, you're learning about perspective when you start to create things in three dimensions. So all these drawings are all going to help you to get better at drawing and I know you want uh, to build up your skills in drawing, and that's why I do these videos. Thanks so much for watching. And if you're brand new here and you've never been here before to my channel, this is the first time you're seeing one of my videos, I always mention please subscribe on the right-hand side below, the subscribe button. All that's going to do is just my videos will go to your YouTube uh, channel so that when you open up YouTube, you'll see my videos. Because you're, if you're interested in uh, drawing and painting in watercolor, then you'll see my videos right there and then you won't lose a track of me. And that's really all that there is. You won't get any emails or text messages or things like that. YouTube just wants to, if you like my channel, YouTube will do you a big favor and just put my videos right up front on your channel so that when you open up YouTube and watch YouTube, you'll see my videos right there. And that's all it is. So thanks again for watching. And many of you that have been watching for a while, I just want to wish for you the greatest of uh, success in watercolor, in drawing and painting in watercolor, and I'm here to be here every week after week, month after month, and year after year to help you build your skills and get better at watercolor, and um, I know you will if you're just following each week along with us and joining along with us here and working. Uh, okay, so until we meet up again, we'll, uh, wish, I wish you a happy painting.